lost and lonely transgender. Hello y'all, I'm Diana Breanne. I don't give advice, suggestions, information, recommendations. I do share with you my perspective on different topics. Well, well, well. You know, I think a lot of people don't realize that many transgender people are lonely. They're lonely. It's a very difficult journey, especially in the beginning when one is going through transition or detransition. You know, I've talked about both transition and detransition here on my channel. I'm a very balanced channel and a very fair channel. And so I try to um, always give an unbiased um, viewpoint or an unbiased perspective on topics. And so I was talking to my cousin who is, you know, I've talked about her in most recent videos, um, transsexual, intersex, intersex who went through a transsexual journey or what would be called transgender now, but transgender is such a big umbrella term that just go watch my other videos and it, it kind of all explains it. And, um, and so she was telling me, you know, when she first started going through the process as an intersex person deciding that the gender assigned to her um, was not the right one and she started to go through all the transition and everything like that at a very young age and in the teenage years and, and a lot of the transition uh, the social part of the transition the medical part and then the social part of the transition kind of followed and so when she left home she said she remembered um, a couple different occasions where she felt so lonely. In high school, she felt very, very lonely. She had a few really good friends that loved her and embraced her, and her family loved and embraced her, of course, and yet um, she felt very lonely at times because she, this is back in the 50s and 60s, so, you know, that's a long time ago, and when uh, it wasn't cool to be transgender. And I've talked all about this over and over and over. So I'm not going to go over and over that. If you want to know more, just go back on my other videos on my transgender topics. And they're all more recent videos because, well, I've done about over 6,000 videos and only recently have I started talking about this topic. But anyhow, she told me um, one time when she was about 16, she drove out and she spent the night in a motel and by herself and she just felt so alone she just felt alone and then when she was just a little bit older she graduated high school early and then she went from high school she went to um she went and so she was telling me that at one point she moved she was from a very small small country kind of town and she moved to a larger city at one point and this is after all the transition and everything you know had taken place both physically and and um socially and everything like that and she remembers she rented a tiny little uh, apartment. It was a tiny apartment in a kind of a cold building. It was a safe building, but it was kind of cold. The hallway was cold, um, cement-like. And uh, she didn't have a cell phone. She didn't have a telephone. Uh, she didn't have a TV. I don't even think she had a radio. And she said, you know, she would spend all of her time in that little apartment. She wasn't there very long. But um, this is before she went off to college and then later to California as a late teenager to California. And, uh, but she said she felt so lonely and she got a job as a hostess, as, as like the lead hostess at this restaurant downtown in this, this nice size city. And somebody that knew her from high school and that knew her from that small town happened to walk in that restaurant, even though that was a couple hours away. And, you know, she felt very, very uncomfortable that they were going to, um, you know, tell on her, tell, you know, tell her story. And back then it was a truly, truly something that, you know, you weren't out in the open with. Even though she was out in the open, she had to be in her little small country town and everybody loved and embraced her from that knew her. Um, but the out, you know, outlying areas that didn't know her personally, didn't always embrace her. And so she moved away and then she moved to that big city. And even in that big city, it was still 
something that was unheard of, you know, back then in, you know, in that time period. And she said she felt very lonely and isolated. So she ended up going back home to her family and then she went to college and then she went to California and began a new life. But she said, you know, now of course she's not lonely. She's very happy. She has a beautiful family. She's had love. She's had everything pretty much that one dreams of in life. And yet, um, she talks about the loneliness of transgender people, how they feel lost and lonely. Not all, but many. Many go through that lost, lonely period. Even the ones that have are surrounded by love. They feel kind of alone because they feel like um, they're the only one going through something like this. So I come on here and talk about this subject a lot, and I have talked about it a lot here lately. And people say, why are you talking about this so much? Your grandma channel talks about wisdom. Well, this is just false, comes in the category of wisdom too. You know, I talk about all kinds of subjects. You know, people can feel lost and lonely and, you know, not be transgender. You can be anybody that can feel that way. So always remember there are other people that are going through what you're going through or who have gone through what you've gone through. And she's a very happy person today. And she's living an amazing, amazing life, helping other people through her wisdom, her gifts, her talents, her abilities, her kindness, her love, and her thoughts. From my house to yours, may God bless you. I hope you like, share, subscribe, and I hope to talk to you soon again. Bye-bye.